So, uh, let's say they were painting a, a sphere here, guys. Um, remember what we talked about last time? About kind of a two-thirds, one-third type of some nice texture on there, but I'm doing my texture from a brush. So here is a way that we could approach this. We're eating into it like this. I'm going to lock this so I can't really go out of it. Out of the shape, I mean. And I am trying to paint this, guys, without... Um, softening up those texture strokes that I'm using. The movement and the life of this will be much stronger if I have these really bold strokes in there. Now why would that be? Why would why would that make movement? The biggest thing here um, is when you put in these strokes and these textures like this, you're suddenly telling someone there is more to this than just it's not just a it's not just something you look at and it's it's there for you. It requires that your eyes interpret it slightly. So look at how interesting that is right now. Okay? How interesting the whole thing is and watch what will happen uh, as soon as I blur this. suddenly becomes like a kind of cheap. You know what I mean? Let's say I've done this and I'm pretty happy with what I've got here. And, uh, you know, maybe, I don't know. This is like a reflective marble or something. And I've got some type of a, you know, any, we'll say it's reflective. One way of painting is you take an image and you bring it over your painting. And I'm going to show you guys how we'd apply this image to that, that with the texture. So I found this metal that was kind of like cracking, which is kind of interesting. Now here's my painting without it. And here's my sphere. I just selected it by itself. What I can do is hit invert, which is like command shift I and turn this back on and delete and then I get that by itself and then what I could do is I've got my texture layer right on top of another layer you can kind of see it when I turn the opacity down I can change this to multiply it here and I'm going to do the levels so that there's more light on this than there is dark what you could do is say or for perspective and if you want this to feel like it really fits on this thing this will definitely make your image go a little soft so I would maybe do something like that and then do my step again and now it feels on some of these areas it feels like uh, it's wrapping a little bit more. From here, what I would do is, with a low opacity brush, into the shadows a bit, like this. And right there on the highlight. I can go in there really tight, right along this highlight area, and say, Just where the highlight is, I can go in and do this. This could be like a dinosaur skin or it could be, you know, whatever. Whatever you guys want. Oh, and, uh, yeah. That, so that's one way to apply a texture, guys. So fur and hair is pretty simple. Um, it's all about overlapping and, and I'm 
doing this on a small scale, guys, uh, so we can just look at it as we go. So the first thing you want to do is you're just starting out really simple with just the colors that you want to use for uh, for this thing. And you're going to see what will happen is I'm just using that basic brush here. I'm going to start getting some really broad strokes in here. And I'm going to just build up here a bit. This is probably Juan Pascal. This probably goes hand in hand with uh, making grass as well. I use kind of the same technique, so I don't put like that. So on a really small scale, with that, that make it a lot easier to uh, and then everything else is just like that, you know. Um, and then at the end, uh, depending on the type of the fur, you could add highlights like this. Did that whole thing just using this brush? It works just like that. Great. Um, okay, 